This is Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything Stadia related. And for today's video, we'll be discussing some good news, some bad news, and some news on the competition, but let's get the bad news out of the way first. If you've been looking forward to playing Doom Eternal upon Stadia's launch, well I'm sorry to say that you're gonna have to wait just a little bit longer. The game has officially been delayed till March 20, 2020. This news comes to us via the official Doom Twitter page where they announce what the reasoning for the delay is. Aside from saying it's due to the fact that they want to meet our greatest expectations, they also announced three other bullet points. Invasion Mode, a game mode that allows you to enter another player's game, will be delayed till shortly after the game launches. And the other two points aren't necessarily related to Stadia, but I'll let you know. The Doom Eternal port for the Nintendo Switch will be coming but after the other platforms launch, and Doom 64 is now a pre-order bonus on all the available platforms it's launching on for those who pre-ordered Doom Eternal. Now for my take on the news, yeah it really does suck because that's one less game that's going to be coming out on Stadia's launch that I was personally looking forward to. With that said, I'd much rather them release a good game at launch than release one that's just unfinished. Especially with a game like Doom that has a heavy focus on the single player content. With that said, I do think they have a cool opportunity on their hands and I hope to see them do it. Maybe include Doom 2016 for those who pre-order Doom Eternal on Google Stadia. Do let me know in the comments section below if this affects what games you plan on picking up for Stadia's launch as I know some of you are really looking forward to Doom Eternal. Anyways, it's time to move on to the next bit of news and this time let's focus on developers reactions to trying out Google Stadia. In a recent interview from Twinfinite, they have the opportunity to sit down with Samurai Showdown's producer Yasuyuki Oda. On a side note, sorry if I botched that name by the way, but let's get back to it. Toward the end of the interview, the discussion topic of Stadia came up. The interviewer from Twinfinite stated the following. That's actually something I'm really curious about. Samurai Showdown is a really fast and precise almost split second game. You guys also put so much effort into improving the control response on consoles. How is it working on Stadia with the lag related to distance? Producer Yasuyuki Oda then responded by saying, It's always hard to say until something launches because that's when all the issues come out, but from our side, we're very confident in it. Now it hasn't been released yet, so possible bandwidth issues aren't going to crop out until launch, but we're not worried about it honestly. We think that Google has a nice infrastructure and they're really serious about it. Now if you're interested in hearing the full interview, be sure to check it out, I'll put the link in the description below. But as always, it's good to hear that developers have faith not just in Stadia as a platform, but Google pulling this off and investing the right amount into it. Funny enough, this isn't the only recent interview we've seen about a developer talking about Google Stadia. The senior producer of Assassin's Creed Odyssey recently sat down with Edge magazine to give a quick interview. With that said, the current information I'm getting is coming from a PC Games N article. The article is a very good read, so I'm definitely linking it in the description below, so be sure to check it out, but for now let me give you a quick summary. Mark Alexis, the senior producer, actually was very against the idea of Google Stadia it seems. He even states that he was a proud non-believer at the start. So much so that when his boss put him in a car to go to Montreal to check it out, and I quote, he said, Why are you wasting my time? That stuff will never work. Little did he know that his mind would be completely changed after Google demoed Doom on a mobile device in front of him. He continued to say the following, Then they put the controller in my hand and oh, I couldn't tell the difference. They were streaming Doom from Toronto using a connection from a phone which was pretty remarkable. I couldn't tell the difference, I was like, I'm seeing the future now. And according to Edge magazine, that experience is what led to Project Stream using Assassin's Creed Odyssey as their test. Now if you ask me, all this stuff makes a lot of sense. I definitely think Google Stadia is the type of service that people need to try out before they start believing in it. And I'm 100% sure that there's going to be a ton of doubters out there singing a different tune down the road. But as I said before, it's always nice to hear developers talking about it as it really does build more confidence in the Stadia platform. Now the next bit of news may or may not be related to Google Stadia directly, but I thought I'd include it anyways. Google recently announced a new feature coming to Google Home devices and that's called Stream Transfer. Basically what this feature allows you to do is move your content from one screen to another. Obviously this will only work with Google connected devices such as Chromecast, Google Home Hubs and the like. Now as I stated before, nowhere in this announcement does it mention Stadia at all, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this implementation reach Stadia too. 
But today's biggest news isn't actually related to Google or Stadia at all. In fact, it's related to one of its biggest competitors, PlayStation. That's right, the new system is officially labeled the PlayStation 5, what a surprise. But more importantly, we finally got a release frame from Sony, and that's Holidays 2020. Now before I get into it, I did want to point out that I debated putting this into the video, but ultimately decided that it's worth talking about. After all, most of the third party developers are probably still going to be targeting toward consoles, so that's going to affect what type of games we get ported over to Stadia, so I think it's worth talking about. So what else did we find out today other than name and release date? And how does it compare to Google Stadia? Well, let's discuss it. So let's take this point by point, and the first thing we know is that it's going to have hardware based ray tracing. Now, from everything we know about Google Stadia, they've never discussed ray tracing, so I'm assuming it's not there. It was always very interesting to me that they never showed it off when they first announced Stadia at GDC. And if you're wondering why, it's because now we know that the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Scarlet support it in a big way. Now, when it comes to Google Stadia, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to have any sort of ray tracing support, but if it's not hardware based, we're definitely going to see an impact on performance. And believe me, I do know that Stadia can run multiple server blades to counteract that, but I would imagine Google wants to avoid doing that as it will up the cost of using these servers. The next thing they talked about is their unique approach to storage. With the PlayStation 5, Sony seems to be moving to SSDs. Not only that, but they seem to be taking a more unique take on how you store your games. For example, let's say you play Call of Duty, but you only want to play the multiplayer portion. You don't want to have the single player portion actually taking up data on your PlayStation 5. Well, with the PlayStation 5, that seems like their target. They're going to allow you to actually delete the single player portion and just keep the multiplayer files to play. Now, in comparison to Stadia, storage is no longer a problem. That's not something you have to worry about if you're playing your games through the cloud. And honestly, this has to be one of my favorite things about Google Stadia in general. I'm so tired of having to delete and reinstall games that I want to play just for a few hours. Especially now that big AAA titles are taking more and more room. Seriously, some of these games are reaching over 100 gigabytes for an install. And the next thing they introduced was physical games now running on 100GB optical discs. And this is good news considering some PS4 games are actually launching with multiple discs now. Really brings me back to those PS1 days if I'm being honest. Now in comparison to Stadia, obviously no discs, all in the cloud, there you go. The next thing they talked about was the controller changes, in fact they're introducing haptic feedback, new speakers, adaptive triggers, and switching over to USB Type-C. Now, truth be told, I'm a huge fan of the DualShock controllers, and I like the way Google Stadia's controller looks, but I kinda do wish they went out and put on more features on it. Now, I'm sure the Stadia controllers will handle just fine. In fact, anyone who's tried it out at a gaming convention has only had positive feedback to share. Either way, we'll be able to use the DualShock 5 on Stadia, as I'm pretty sure it's gonna be an HID compliant device. It would just be nice to have additional features like adaptive triggers and haptic feedback if you get what I mean. And the last thing they talked about was having support for 4K Blu-rays. And that's just simply not a thing on Stadia so there's not much to compare. Now they also hinted towards a really big exclusive being made but there's a lot of information that just really doesn't have much to do with Stadia so if you want to read up on it, it'll be in the description linked below. Now personally, don't get me wrong, I know it may sound like I'm hating a bit on it, but I'll be picking up a PS5 day one. My first console was a PlayStation 1, and ever since then I've grown up with the brand, and frankly speaking, I can't say no to their powerhouse exclusives. Either way, I can't wait to hear more about the PlayStation 5 in terms of hardware. According to the rumors that have been floating around for quite some time now, it seems like both the Xbox Scarlet and the PS5 are aiming to be more powerful than a single server blade. And speaking as someone who wants to invest money into Stadia, I really hope so. Stadia after all is built to scale and I expect Google to play catch up if they ever get past or use multiple server blades to fix that issue. Anyways, that'll wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out. And if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell too. Now for today's end of video message, I actually want to ask you a question. Let's say that Stadia works out perfectly, are you still going to be buying a next gen console? As you just heard, I will certainly be buying a PlayStation 5 at the very least. 
but are exclusives enough to drive you to buy a PS5 or Xbox Scarlet? I don't know, and I'm curious to find out. Thanks for your continued support, and thanks for watching. Anyways, this has been Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything Stadia related. The Gen S community is officially 1000 strong and growing by the day. And until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds. Peace.